Uh, good morning. Um, it's actually about 7.30 in the morning on Monday. Um, yeah, I have a breather right strip on. I just got up. I've been up for about two hours. Um, the reason why I wanted to film this for you is because I wanted to show you what happens when common medicine gets a hold of you when you have emergency situations. Uh, it started off in 2017 when I had a heart attack. I was on no medication except for one, and that was uh, methadone. And the reason why I'm on that is I'm a prescription drug addict that's in recovery. Uh, I'm trying to wean myself off of uh, prescription drugs. In 1997, I started passing kidney stones. And in 1989, I was in a severe car accident and broke my pelvis. Uh, in that time, at 16 years old, I became physically dependent upon morphine. And then they had to take me off of that in 2000. Pardon me, 1997 at the age of 23, when I started passing kidney stones, I was on Vicodin for f almost four years. And when they cut me off of it, um, I started to go through withdrawal pretty bad. So I ended up going through a chemical dependency services at Kaiser and ended up um, <clears throat> being clean for about 10 years. And then at the age of about 37, I had pancreatitis that almost killed me as well. I was in the hospital for uh, two months. I was on some heavy, heavy narcotics and became physically dependent on those as well. Had to be weaned off of those. And since then, <clears throat> I'm now 46. That was nine years ago. I went through an up and down battle off and on constantly through for pain medications. So for the last four years, I've been on methadone. But in 2017, when I had the car accident, or pardon me, the, the heart attack, um, I went from being on one medication to now I was on four medications. And then in August of this past year of 2019, I started to get uh, spikes in my, my blood pressure started going up. And as a result of that, um, from August until December, when I had another heart procedure in December, I am now on this. So let me go ahead and go over this with you and see what it is that you're actually looking at. So I'm actually on two inhalers. This is Simbacort, and the other one is Spiriva. I don't have that one with me. I have to pick that up today. Um, with the Simbacort, the reason why I'm on this medication is because I have adult onset asthma. And uh, we're in the process of <clears throat> getting rid of it, but it also can be gotten rid of through diet. Next medication, pretty easy, is ibuprofen. This is just a common painkiller because of my past. This is if I have any moderate pain, small pains, to moderate to uh, semi-severe, I usually take uh, ibuprofen for it. With this other medications, one of these actually reacts with a leave, so I'm not able to take it. And this is my friendly little methadone. Um, at um, one point in time, I was all the way down from 81 milligrams all the way down to 26 and I went back up to 81 milligrams and I'm in the process of weaning off of this. This is 78 milligrams and in the next 26 weeks um, I'm dropping 3 milligrams a week to be able to come off of this. Next one is uh, Protonics and this is for my stomach because I get really bad heartburn and this is something that's actually scary. Uh, when I was uh, about 4 years ago I was having real problems with uh, acid reflux so I was told to take Zantac because I don't want to take another prescription medication. So I was taking Zantac religiously for almost four years. And then a couple of months ago, they ended up pulling it off the shelves because they determined that it causes stomach cancer. And even though as of December of 2019, I was determined that the heart or the chest pains that I've been experiencing had nothing to do with my heart. The flu has everything to do with my stomach. So I'm concerned that... I may have fallen victim to what Zantac has created, which is cancer either of my stomach or my pancreas or my intestines, which I hope this isn't the case. I'm not trying to be a, a doomsday sayer or anything like that, but uh, with, the, with the Zantac, that is a problem, and hopefully nobody has to deal with that. But uh, you trust a company that's putting it out on the shelves. I used to buy it at Walmart, and 
come to find out that it's not safe and so now I'm on uh, protonics for that and I have to take this I have to take this medication twice a day and this is a stool softener called Colace and the reason why I'm on that is because this little baby right here causes severe constipation um, Tums you might see that as well over the counter uh, Doc said, look, if you can't take Zantac and you have some heartburn issues, just take some Tums. This is polyethylene glycol. And the reason why I'm on this particular medication is because this is a, a um, gentle laxative. And at 46 years old, because of my issues with good old methadone, uh, I have to fight constipation. Uh, it was determined in <coughs> December of 2019. I went into two different emergency rooms, and I had CAT scans during that time, but they never told me <clears throat> that I was severely impacted. I had about four feet of uh, fecal matter in six feet of intestine, and one of the reasons why I was having pancreatic pain was because the intestine has will swell up when it's impacted, and it was pushing against my pancreas. So mind you, your colon's down in your pelvic region, and so that... My intestine wraps up around my left side. It comes up right underneath my rib cage, and it goes back down uh, to my right side where the appendix is, and it meets up with the, uh, the the small intestine in that area. Well, I had fecal matter all the way up um, into my chest area, and it was pushing against my pancreas. So that's why I was experiencing pain. At that point in time, I was put on the colase, and this bad boy here again. Um, this is a Miralax. What they don't tell you is this is actually polyethylene glycol. And if you guys know what polyethylene glycol is, that is the base for antifreeze. So I'm taking antifreeze so I can take a poop. Um, next one here is, uh, is Plavix. And this is a very common blood thinner. I have to take this once a day. And in conjunction with that, I take over the aspirin as well. Um, the only problem with this is I was off of this for a little while. And the reason being is eventually aspirin... Uh, you lose the effect of aspirin and then it starts to thin the walls of your blood vessels in your brain so you can actually get a stroke. Uh, doctors don't tell you that and I don't know why but I did some research and found out that the longest they want you on this is about six months to a year so I had to quit taking it but since uh, I started having problems again in um, August of 2019 my cardiologist put me back on aspirin and uh, I'm going to discuss stopping and take this with him, but I have to take that that pill at least uh, at least one today. Uh, next in line, you guys may have heard of this; it's very popular. Is um, this bad boy right here, which is of course Lipitor. Um, that is a uh, <clears throat> cholesterol medication. I take this once a day. Uh, it's a big uh, 40 milligram tablet. It's actually one of the biggest tablets I take. Uh, and then these here, these four here, have to do with specifically with my heart. Um, in the back there is a medication called amlodipine, and me living in Lodi, the way I remembered it was, it's amlodi pine, and here in town we have a pine street, so I was able to remember it. The generic is Norvask. I actually have to take this um, once a day, uh, every day in the morning, and when I first started this particular medication, um, I was taking two milligrams, or two pills a day, and it was so, dropped my blood pressure so low, um, that I would pass out. I'd be just walking walking along and just pass out. We figured that that was one of the problems because the medication was so strong that it was actually lowering my blood pressure to the point that um, my not enough blood was getting into my brain with oxygen, and so I'd pass out. So I had to back off on it. Another one here, an uh, or Vasotec. This is one that I was supposed to take. Um, I was supposed to take two a day, but again, this is another one that's just too strong, so I take one a day, and that's for also for my blood pressure, my heart. Um, this is another one, I can never remember how to say it, it's Isordil or Isosorbdin. Um, this one I have to take uh, three times a day, but because the strength of it, uh, how strong this particular medication is, I only take it twice a day. And then last but not least is this little guy right here. This is nitroglycerin. Um, this is as needed. And the thing with, with nitroglycerin, what happens is when blood pressure gets too high, 
I take one of these and it opens up all the blood vessels and causes a vasodilation. So blood starts flowing through my veins and stuff so that I don't end up having a heart attack. But the only problem with this is when that happens, it also increases my heart rate. My standing heart rate is usually about 60. Uh, if I'm a little stressed out, it goes to about 70, 75. When I take one of these little bad boys, it goes up to over 100. So it's an uncomfortable feeling. Even though it's saving your life, it's still uncomfortable to take. So uh, my, my point to showing you all this and this little journey here is because I turn around and dole them out all through this medication here. And I have to take these once a day, once in the morning, once a night, every single day. My hope is that you will watch me come off these medications over time so that in the next six months to a year, I can show that through diet and exercise and doing what I'm supposed to do, I get the opportunity to actually come off these medications and through uh, through these things with, with my diet, it'll begin to heal the problems I'm having with my stomach. It'll begin to heal the problems I'm having with my heart. It'll begin to heal some of the issues that I, that I, that I suffer with, one, sleeplessness, um, constipation. Hopefully all those things will just start to go away. So uh, that was just, again, a part of my daily journey, uh, 13, 14 medications every single day. And this is what medicine does to get you better is they push you on more and more and more pills. And then when you get the side effects, they push you on more pills to deal with the side effects. And then how they deal with those side effects, they get you on more pills to deal with those side effects. And it's an ongoing cycle of insanity. Uh, it, 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 trust me, taking all these medications, I don't feel good every day. Um, I usually feel pretty bad, actually. I'm still in pain with my pancreas. I was still in pain with my chest pains. I still had a problem swallowing food. I th thought I was choking last night because I was eating an apple and it had a little bit of peanut butter in it. It got stuck in my esophagus right before it went into my stomach. It was a really uncomfortable feeling because it felt like a, a cramp as every time my esophagus would try to squeeze that down and push it into my stomach. So I kept drinking water over and over and over again. Hopefully it would, hopefully it would push it down. When it finally did, it felt like I was trying to swallow a golf ball. It hurt so bad. But I mean, these are the things that I'm dealing with right now because I'm not well. I'm alive, but I'm not well. One thing I'll say about the medical industry, you know, God bless them, they did save my life, but they call their stuff a medical practice, not a medical perfect, because practice, quote unquote, makes perfect. No, practice makes better, never perfect. Um, if they, if it made perfect, then Metallica would never have to play another another uh, note again because they practice it so much that they don't have to do it anymore because now it's perfect. Or, you know, the basketball players like LeBron James, he wouldn't have to practice anymore because he's done it so many times, he's perfect. Well, they have a medical practice, and you know what, thank God for them because they did keep me alive, but this monstrosity here is how they know how to keep me alive, and unfortunately... Um, that is not something that I want to have to deal with for the rest of my life, but through this is actually my breakfast. This is going to be my breakfast here with a little bit of peanut butter and a bottle of water and then a little bit of uh, raw almonds. With that right there, hopefully that, you know, eating those types of things for breakfast with a lot of water, uh, taking my medications, and after that, the reason why I look the way I do, hoo -hoo, I look so sexy right now, um, I'm going to go from here and I'm going to the gym. Uh, I need to get on a stationary bike for half an hour. Uh, and you do some sit-ups, do some weight training. Uh, by the way, when I first started these, these videos, I was at 232. Um, I went down to 218. Um, right now, I'm back up to 222, and I have a doctor's appointment uh, today to meet with my cardiologist. So I'll keep you posted. Uh, if you like what I just showed you today, please go ahead and hit the like button. Um, also, you know, make a comment. Tell us about your story in the comments below. And uh, also smash that subscribe button. And... Uh, I'll see you next time.